We're winding down coverage here at GSA Day, John Duty's uh, conference he's putting on in Fort Lauderdale. Joining me now is David Harkill. He's the CEO of Franco Nevada. David, thanks for being back with us. I'm happy to be back again. So one year ago, we sat and, and chatted, and you were cautious about 2013, mm-hmm. saying you weren't so optimistic about gold, and uh, it turned out to be true. We got a lot of feedback after that interview. Mm-hmm. How do you see gold set up now in 2014? You know, in terms of when I spoke last year, we would had a 12-year bull run, and you know, lucky number 13 is always unlucky. So we were a bit concerned. I think I think what's healthy now is we've had a good correction in the market, and I think all the ingredients are right now is we're consolidating through that. And I think uh, I'm constructive. I think this this year is going to be probably a trading range, but I think it's going to set the base when that big comeback will come in gold again. I'm optimistic, but I'm I'd say at least a year of basing here in the gold price but I think we've got the bottom. So that's similar to what your chairman, uh, Pierre Lasson, was saying. He, he was saying, yeah, I'm, I'm bullish gold, but I'm mm-hmm. not necessarily looking at $1,600, $1,800 gold. Yeah. Uh, what tra- range are you looking at? I better be the same as my chairman. <laughs> so uh, so I, I think a trading range right now, we've already had you know, 1150 to 1350 gold. I think, you know, I'd say something between 12 to 1400 is actually a nice range. We can still do business, and uh, I think the industry itself is kind of basing itself for that type of outlook. So, David, do you also uh, pass along this optimism to the mining stocks? How do you see them set up? You know, right now they've had such a huge hit. All I'm meeting now is people that are uh, looking at this as a value sector, that they now see an opportunity. They made money in the general S&P 500 stocks last year. They've been looking for the most out-of-favor sector, and gold stocks look like it. So I'm just talking to one fellow earlier. He's, he's opening up a new gold fund right now because he just sees opportunity. I think, uh, I think what we see is any sort of stabilizing and improvement in, in the stocks is just going to bring in uh, investors back into the sector again. But it's going to take time. So I'm looking at it as constructive over the next few years. Let's talk Franco Nevada now. Your results are coming up end of March, but what can you tell us so far? Uh, how's the company been doing? You know, we've been uh, blessed. I think we've been exceeding analysts' uh, expectations in the last few quarters because we have a diversified portfolio. I think one of the things now is people question why we had about 20% of our business in oil and gas, and now they're thanking us for that. Uh, we were able to raise our dividends last year, and I've been able to tell people that our dividend is secure this year, and the only question is whether we raise it for the seventh consecutive year. Uh, so we, I think, are demonstrating we've got probably one of the most uh, uh, robust business models in the business, and uh, that's really where we want to be. We want to be sort of the, the safe gold investment. If a generalist fund wants to pick one safe gold stock, we want to be the choice. Are there any acquisitions you plan to do this year? We've been busy already. In the last four months, we've deployed over $240 million. I think the uh, the one that stood out was uh, we supported Trenga with $135 million to uh, expand the Sabadola mine in Senegal. And that was a real win-win. Their stock's up 150% since we did that transaction with them. Uh, we've also bought royalties with uh, Kirkland Lake Gold, a great gold trend in Ontario. And we've even gone back to our roots. Uh, in Nevada, we've supported Klondex Mining. And you got to remember, Nevada is our middle name, so <clears throat> we've got royalties now in both their Fire Creek and Midas property. And for those listeners that remember, Midas was one of our original assets back in the original Franco back in the 1990s. So it's very nice to go full circle. So, David, here we are. We're at GSA Day. We had the top 10 mining companies that John Duty has picked. We have the BMO Metals uh, Conference coming up, and then we have PDAC. So three mining conferences. Yeah. Is, there a, uh, is there a theme that you're hearing uh, this year? I know last year was look at the changing of the guard. Look how many CEOs have changed, look how much the mining industry has changed. What are you seeing for 2014? You know, I think 2013 was basically everyone beating up on mining CEOs, you know, how lousy they did their jobs, how, uh, how what a terrible job they were doing. I think that's yesterday's news. And so I think everyone now is looking to be uh, more constructive and saying, how do we make money from where we are right now, especially with assets being so cheap. And uh, it's just part of life having all these conferences. I have to speak at the PDAC next weekend. And uh, I, you have to help me with my speech. I don't know what I'm going to say yet. <laughs> well, right. we'll see you there, David. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thanks for watching our continuous coverage from GSA Day here in Fort Lauderdale. We'll have more coverage for you on Kiko.com. In the meantime, you could follow this conversation on Twitter at Daniela Camboni. Thanks for watching.